the LMW Electronics surveillance van demonstrator is a Mercedes Vito. It looks like a perfectly normal van but is fitted with eight cameras. Of these two are movable having pan, tilt and zoom facilities and the others are hidden pinhole types. The cameras can be monitored either locally from the van or remotely using LMW wireless video and audio technology. We will now show the positions of the cameras one by one and the picture from each of them. On top of the vehicle is a Fletner vent hide. This houses a mirror door cylinder camera and provides a 360 degree view from the roof of the vehicle. It is also completely waterproof and the 360 degree rotation is continuous without any stop. Six preset positions are available. The following picture shows a mirror door camera in a rural location. This video clip shows the ability of the vent hide to rotate and zoom in on targets. The maximum rotation speed of the vent fitted with a mirror door is about 8 seconds. In addition to the continuous 360 degree rotation, it can tilt up and down by plus and minus 20 degrees. The mirror door has 36 times optical zoom and 12 times digital zoom capability. A useful feature is differential zoom. This means that when the camera is zoomed in on a target, the speed of rotation is slowed to make tracking the target easier. This camera uses the industry standard Sony FCB EX1010 module. The second PTZ camera fitted into the vehicle is hidden in a fire extinguisher attached to the rear bulkhead of the passenger compartment. This is also fitted with a mirror door camera and in this position has a field of view of about 180 degrees. To the right of the fire extinguisher you can see a baby seat. This is removable and houses a mirror door camera. The baby seat is portable and can be fitted with its own battery and recorder. You can now see the fire extinguisher camera hide in operation. All the cameras you see are connected to the vehicle via the VMS video management system which we will show you shortly. In addition to the two PTZ cameras we have shown there are connectors on the vehicle for an additional two. We will now show you the remaining six cameras which are all fixed position pinhole types located in various positions around the vehicle. Pinhole cameras are called perimeter cameras and are located all around the vehicle. The first one is fitted into the driver's rear view mirror. If you look carefully you can see the small hole behind which is the camera. This camera can be moved slightly by altering the position of the mirror. You can now see the view from the rear view mirror camera. Looking out on the right hand side of the van is a camera hidden in the dashboard. This looks sideways through the driver's front door window. Again, you can just make out the hole behind which is located the camera followed by the view shown by that camera. The van is fitted with rear view door mirrors on each side. On the passenger side a pinhole camera has been fitted to the door mirror. No hole is actually made in the mirror. The mirror is removed from the housing and the coating on the mirror carefully removed. This provides a clear view down the side of the van. Hanging on the rear bulkhead of the passenger compartment is a coat hanger. Concealed inside is a pinhole camera. This looks forwards towards the front of the vehicle and provides a view through the windscreen. This camera allows some flexibility of movement depending upon the cable length. In the rear passenger compartment are two headrests on the back of the seats. The passenger side one is fitted with a pinhole camera which looks out of the side of the vehicle as you can see from the following video. Finally the last pinhole camera is located in the high level central rear brake light. As the camera zooms in you can just make out the hole for the camera in the center of the underside of the light. 
This provides a good field of view across the back of the van. Part of the surveillance vehicle equipment is a deployable video link to monitor an additional target. It consists of a low power analog link with telemetry control. This transmits back a picture to the vehicle. A camera on a tripod is connected to a small weatherproof case containing the transmitter, outstation and battery. PTZ control is achieved either directly from the vehicle or from a remotely located nemesis. Having shown you details of all the cameras, we now turn to the equipment that enables transmission, switching and recording of the images obtained from the cameras. This equipment is contained in the rear compartment of the van. With the doors open, you can see the equipment itself on the left hand side and two large viewing screens. We will now show you the individual equipment items and explain their purpose. We will give a brief description but please remember that full specifications are available from either your local agent or from LMW Surveillance directly. We now take a look at the VMS or Video Management System. This is effectively the brains of the vehicle. This has a number of connectors which interface to the PTZ cameras, the pinhole cameras, any recorders and the video transmission equipment. It can connect up to four pan, tilt and zoom cameras and has 12 configurable input or outputs for connection to either fixed cameras, screens or recorders. The VMS also connects to the video transmitter, in this case a COFDM Hawkeye, and also contains a UHF telemetry receiver for remote control by a nemesis. The video transmission from the vehicle is done by the Hawkeye COFDM digital video transmitter. This has an RF output power of 1 watt which can be subsequently amplified to 5 watts. Versions of the Hawkeye range are available for frequencies between 320 MHz and 3.5 GHz. COFDM transmission is excellent for penetrating buildings and where the path is obstructed. The Hawkeye transmitter is connected to the VMS for interfacing to the various cameras. The 1 watt power output of the Hawkeye transmitter is amplified to 5 watts by this power amplifier. An optional part of the vehicle equipment is the Jupiter, which is shown here in the van. The Jupiter is a secure mobile telecoms network video transmitter. The Jupiter connects to the local GSM, GPRS, Edge or HSDPA network and can then transmit the video to anywhere else that is able to receive network signals. Not only is video transmitted but there is camera control in the reverse direction. The signal from the Jupiter is received either by the standalone Juno network receiver or using supplied software on a computer. This picture shows the Juno which has the capability to record to a USB memory stick and also a video output for an external recorder. Control of the cameras and viewing of the pictures is done using either an OWL HC or Mini HC hand controller. The Jupiter Juno combination can be connected to the VMS system in the vehicle and this enables control of the van equipment from wherever the Jupiter signal can be received. Previously we showed the analog link, which consisted of the remote camera on the tripod. This analog transmission is received by this unit, which is the VR3 analog receiver. The receiver is connected into the VMS, which allows the received video signal to be retransmitted on the main COFDM link to the Nemesis. The small box at the rear of the compartment with the LED display is a battery condition indicator. This shows the voltage of the battery and also has an alarm which activates when the battery voltage falls below a predetermined level. The surveillance equipment in the vehicle runs from a separate battery which is located behind the rear passenger seat and hidden in a sports bag. A split charging system charges this battery and the vehicle battery. 
inventory when the engine is running. In order to control and view the cameras locally, a hand controller is needed. There are two types, the OWL HC shown on the right and the Mini HC on the left. The OWL HC is fully functioned with two toggle controls for PTZ and focus. It also has a number of screens with soft buttons allowing setup and configuration of various equipments including the cameras, VMS and Jupiter. The Mini HC is smaller with less features and allows functions such as PTZ and focus. There are two connectors for these in the vehicle, one in the rear compartment and one in the front glove box. In this vehicle, the glove compartment houses the overall on-off switch for the surveillance equipment, a connector for a hand controller and on the left a flashback to recorder. In the rear compartment are two large flat screens. The one on the right shows the camera which is selected and the one on the left is divided up to show four of the eight cameras on the vehicle. To do this, a foresight unit is fitted which can be seen below the left hand screen. The foresight is connected through the VMS and up to any four cameras can be selected and shown on the monitor. Selection of the cameras is done using a hand controller locally or the Nemesis receiver remotely. The antennas on a surveillance vehicle are always an important consideration as they have to work as efficiently as possible but remain hidden. The S-band antenna is hidden in a shark's fin enclosure as seen in the video. Another type is the bee sting type as shown. This is a dual band antenna with an S band antenna in the base and the whip acts as a UHF antenna. The telemetry antennas which are for control of the cameras are hidden in the rear light clusters. The cameras on the vehicle are received remotely using the Nemesis receiver controller which also enables control and switching of all the cameras. The Nemesis consists of a rugged telecase housing a Hawkeye COFDM receiver and a telemetry transmitter. In the lid of the Pegasus is a large flat screen which enables the video feeds to be viewed. A membrane touch panel is provided to allow commands to be sent by wireless telemetry. Two hot standby batteries are provided internally. Also, a flashback recorder can be fitted internally. The Nemesis can be located typically up to 2 to 3 kilometers from the vehicle, depending on the terrain and antennas used. This picture shows a Pegasus camera outstation and a Mini HC hand controller, which is used for local setup. The Pegasus has a waterproof housing containing a 1 watt COFDM transmitter and a UHF telemetry receiver. It can interface to two cameras which are controlled remotely typically using a Nemesis controller. A connector is provided for local recording. Two antennas are required, one for the COFDM video and the other for the telemetry. Audio and data can also be transmitted. An additional Hawkeye receiver can be fitted into the vehicle to receive the transmission in a similar manner to the L-band link previously mentioned. I hope that has enabled you to obtain a good idea of the capabilities of LMW surveillance. Thank you.